gonna compliment you the entire time. He might be a little fresh. The keystone in the arch of Star Wars. Just, but you know, I'm not gonna say no to the right. Sorry, I'm getting like emotional. <laughs> And you got this hulking, scary dude with the big nose and the perfect hair. <laughs> um, <laughs> I understand. This is a safe space. This is a but safe space safe between space. you and I and <laughs> all of your viewers. Cassie and Jen on the beach, people are like, no. You can, I can literally hear people like, go, no. Rogue One was awesome. I love the Han Solo movie. And then, of course, I love the Mandalorian. And, and like getting to talk to fans face to face and learn their names and just you know get to hear their stories and the world of star wars there's a bunch of people who look different and are different species there's lizard men there's psychic baby swamp monsters i joke that the best thing about writing princess leia is everybody knows who she is and the worst thing about writing princess leia is everyone knows who she is <laughs> and also you get ewoks and i am definitely a lover of ewoks <laughs> you only stay around the galaxy Yes, it's a good thing. It's a great thing. Well, welcome to episode number 116 of Around the Galaxy, the Star Wars fan talk show. I am your host, Pete Fletzer. Thank you so much for joining us. If this is your first time checking out Around the Galaxy, well, thank you for being here. And make sure to like, subscribe, and share, and all that stuff you're supposed to do with uh, you know podcasts and YouTube channels, things like that. Follow us on social media at ATGCast, or you can keep up with us on our website at ATGCast.com. If you're a returning visitor, well, you know the drill. Thank you so much for being with us once again, as you know. Every week, I'm privileged to bring you a conversation with an author, a celebrity, an actor, or a super fan, and we get to know their Star Wars journey and the impact that it's had on their lives. Well, this week is no different. This week, we're talking with a TikTok superstar and uh, an amazing impressionist and a voiceover artist, a gentleman named Kevin Cabral. But before we do, I want to just take a minute and welcome you all here this evening. You know, ordinarily, these... Um, um, uh, that we do our, when we do our podcast every week, we record it here and we make the live stream available as an exclusive benefit to our patrons. But did you know that for as little as three dollars a month uh, at patreon.com slash ATG cast, you can support this show and you can join us just like you are tonight as part of our virtual studio audience. And we monitor the chat. We have my good friend, Nick Milkey in the back, running things, watching what you're saying during the show. And often what you guys are saying plays a big part in where the conversation goes. And you may want to be a part of these conversations because over the next several weeks, we have an amazing lineup that you're not going to want to miss. We have entertainment reporter Jermaine Lucier next week uh, on Tuesday. We have the boys from Blue Bantha Milk joining us the week after that. Author Mark Altman, who has a brand new Star Wars book coming out in the June timeframe. Illustrator C. Zhu, uh, she did the amazing Disney Plus Star Wars banner for the May the 4th uh, uh, Disney Plus thing. It, that thing that we all freaked out and loved. She did that. Uh, we also have Tom Spina, who is the mastermind behind Regal Robot Collectibles. And I don't know about you, anything Regal Robot does, I'm like considering if I should sell a kidney to, to bring into my home. Um, and of course... On July 6th, we have uh, somebody that uh, I have followed for quite some time, Mr. Peter Townley, who is the host of the original Star Wars show. He's going to be joining us on July 6th. If you want to be a part of the live audience for those shows and more, if you want to receive other perks such as merch or discounts and meet and greets with our guests, please consider joining us at patreon.com slash ATGcast. Access to this live stream every Tuesday it starts at the entry level. So um, all you have to do is be a part of it and you are a part of it. And listen, if you decide to become a Patreon a Patreon member during tonight's show, first of all, thank you very much. And if you do, you're gonna get a bonus welcome pack. So consider doing that tonight. Again, at the most base entry level, three bucks a month, you're in, you get to come to these shows every time we record. Also, one last thing before we get to the show. We wanna give away a t-shirt tonight. We have a brand new Adventures of Gonky and Clink t-shirt that we just we just published. It's inspired by the latest episode of The Bad Batch. It's up on our Tee Public site. 
but we want to give one away tonight. So here's what you have to do. You have to stick around to later on in the show, and we're going to randomly select one of you from the chat as a winter, as a winner, not a winter, a winner. Um, you just have to comment with hashtag gonky, hashtag gonky in the chat, and we're going to pick a winner near the end of the show. But you got to be present to win. So make sure to hang out if you want this beautiful, lovely free shirt. All right. So now let's get to this week's show. You know, last summer, this 41 seconds of TikTok video took social media by storm. I want to show you this. Here we go. I'm going to add this to the stream. I love Check it when this. you call me senorita. I love it when you call me senorita. It makes me feel nice. Oh, Kenobi. I love it when you call me senorita. Well, 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 miss. I love it when you call me senorita. I love it when you call me senorita. It's a fitting title, don't you think? I happen to like it when you call me Senorita. Is that a problem? I love it when you call me Senorita. You and your pathetic rebellion will soon find that I prefer the term Senorita. <laughs> that was Kevin Cabral, and you guys can't see it, but I can see he's like very embarrassed watching this in the back room. I'm going to bring him in. He's known as Funk Lord Vader on TikTok. That video has over 4.2 million video views, and you can see why. I'm excited to welcome Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, how are you? I'm doing well, Pete. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> happy uh, happy birthday to Star Wars, and happy uh, happy joining us today. How are you? I'm I'm feeling really good. It's been a hot second since I've done a podcast, so I'm excited <laughs> to get back in a forum. And uh, you're right. It's it's embarrassing watching that video because that's coming up on being like a year old. Um, it, I just feel older now. <laughs> and I have considerably less hair, though still quite a bit. Um, that was that was quarantine hair. I hadn't cut it since I got back on March 13th. I'd been in Germany, actually, for a school trip, and I came okay. back after the former president issued order for all, you know, foreign travelers to come back to the States. And I came back and since I got back, I hadn't cut my hair. So <laughs> well, it was unruly. If it makes you feel any better, you are the, you're the youngest guest to ever be on the show. I think the only one who was younger was my daughter when she was nine <gasps> years old and we were just testing the equipment. So, oh, wow. um, so <laughs> welcome. You've, you've already, you've already set a, set a record yeah. here. Heck and yeah. so and I, I know, I know you're, you're still in college, but tell us a little bit about you and, um, and your, you know, how, how you get to doing what you're doing. Sure. So, I mean, I'm Kevin Cabral. I'm a 19, soon to be 20 year old. Um, and I go to school at North Carolina State University. I study industrial systems engineering. Uh, I minor in Spanish and I minor in theater. Um, and I just so happened to get really bored one day in the <laughs> middle of the pandemic. And I made a TikTok and I started putting out some, you know, funny little skits and that sort of deal. And then I thought, maybe I'll put out some of my impressions that I do. People might like that. And eventually I accumulated a bit of a following and I had that video, which last year did blow up both on TikTok and on Twitter and everywhere. And I mean, I still see it show up sometimes like new by some random person who posted on YouTube. And I'm kind of like, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's, it was definitely weird being a bit of a viral sensation for a day. Cause um, let's see, it also happened around the same time that, somebody that I'm friends with, Julian Bass. I don't know if you um, are, if you know of him, he's the guy who got signed on by like Disney and Sony and he did like the lightsaber flipping animation and, and oh, some yeah. craziness. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, with the chair. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's kind of crazy being a little, little nugget of internet culture and uh, hopefully, hopefully it, it's a signal of bigger things to come. Now, did you, did you, had you been doing impressions for long before that? Or how did you end oh, up? Yeah. What made you decide to, I'm going to put up a, a, a TikTok? Well, you had some impressions beforehand, right? Yes. But tell us a little bit about, you know, going into that, that piece of, uh, of, of the TikTok world. That specific video, I think I posted at like three o'clock in the morning because I'd <laughs> filmed it for like the last hour from like two to three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> right. Um, because a lot, a lot of the stuff that I do is informed by the way that I've approached theater and that sort of thing. And so in high school, I was the co-president of my improv group and I'd been in that improv okay. group for four years. And so improv is a huge part of what I do. Most of the stuff that I've done has not been scripted because right. most of the time when I script something out, it becomes so overprocessed that I don't find it funny anymore. And that's something that, I mean, there's certain actors with a skill to just be so fresh on every take, every read of a line 
that I, and I haven't quite picked that skill up yet. Mm. Um, it's something that I wish I had, but that's why I, I, I went and, and just burst of creativity super late at night. And I went into my bathroom and I shot it in the mirror. And I think I probably filmed each take of that thing 10 times. Right. Um, Cause some of those impressions, I mean, I I've got them somewhere in my muscle memory, but it's accessing right. that muscle memory that can take a while. Um, you know, and so, so you started. At, when did you start doing? Like, did you do impressions when you were, when you were? I was gonna say when you were a kid. When you were, <laughs> when you were younger. Um, is that is this something you've always done? I think I've always done voices. Okay. Whether or not I've done impressions is, is is a different question. And I think I keep refining my answer to that question because I don't know that I've ever really done impressions up until I got to maybe my junior or senior year in high school, and I'm now like a college sophomore. I should be a college junior but I took the last year off mm -hmm. regardless. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I always did voices. I remember when I was younger, like before I hit puberty, I did a perfect Bee Gees, like <laughs> spot on. Right. Um, but then after that, I can't quite do them anymore. And it, it, it always came down to, I was doing silly, like cartoon voices because I like to imagine that I was going to be, you know, somebody doing nothing but cartoons, which right. now that I'm a little older and I understand how voiceover works, I'm like, oh, no, that's a that's a special treat that voice actors get. Yeah. And the rest of it is commercial stuff. But, um, you know, I go around and I do like a silly part. You know, I mean, that's not a difficult thing. That's just me pitching my voice up. But so many people are like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and I mean, at the end of the day, I think most people can do a wide range of voices, but impressions is... <sighs> I'm lucky that it comes natural to me, mm -hmm. um, but impressions, it just involves so much dissection of what it is that the person does. And I think in my video, you might see like for Palpatine, I got to get all like physical in my face for that, you know, and like yeah. my, my face gets all contorted and I have to scrunch up my shoulders, but I'll, you know, there's, it's more than just what you say and how you say it. It, ha it also has to come down to like where your mind's at, how you're contorting your body and moving your muscles. And it's a, it's a fun little exercise. I think. Do you do uh, uh, impressions um, outside of star Wars? A couple, yeah. um, you know, one of them is uh, Kermit the frog. You know, everyone loves a good Kermit the frog. Uh, uh, if Kermit was in star Wars, I think he would uh, play an interesting Luke Skywalker. Oh, you're my dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I used I used to do I used to do a, a President Barack Obama. I tend not to do those anymore. Um, uh, you know, so Barack Obama, Mace Windu are, are impressions that I did do at one point. Like even Lando, I, I try not to do anymore. And a lot of that comes down to the, the social discussions right now about sure. identity and how you as an actor should or shouldn't do certain characters. And I think mm -hmm. that. You know, I, I had somebody approach me for a fan project that wanted me to do a Lando. And I was like, I appreciate that you found me and that I can do the voice. But I think especially for for instances where you're where you're looking to get paid, I think it's best like, yeah, I can do the voice. But there's definitely other people who identify with those right. identities who can do the voice, too. And you find them and they'll do just as good as a, of a voice. Um, but. Yeah, not to bring that into an identity thing, but I, I think it's it's super important nowadays. Um, well, no, I mean I, it's it's a very valid thing, and you know, I mean, you're you and I spoke over Twitter, which is how we kind of started, you know, talking to each other about the show, yeah. and you know, it's a, it's a real conversation. It's something mm -hmm. that should be considered, and and um, and I think that is it's 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 really it it's certainly re respectable that you know it's a uh, uh, it's a it's a smart it's a smart way to, 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 to do that and to make sure that you're appropriately positioning yourself as well. Right. right. And right. Um, so yeah. um, let's talk a little bit about your star Wars journey. When did you discover star Wars? How old were you? What are some of your earliest star Wars I, memories? Goodness gracious. I mean, I was like a kid, a very mm -hmm. small kid. And my mother, my single mother, I love her to death. Um, she introduced me to Star Wars because she was getting tired of me watching the straight to VHS Buzz Lightyear of Star Command movie. Uh, I don't know if you know of it, uh, but it was a straight to VHS spinoff of Toy Story. And I would watch that thing incessantly. And she kind of got tired of it and said, OK, I'm going to introduce you to something that I watched when I was younger. Um, and she popped in her VHS copy of A New Hope. And I was hooked instantly. Um, and I watched the whole original trilogy. Was the sequel trilogy wasn't a thing mm -hmm. quite yet, and I think reluctantly, 
uh, she somehow got the prequel trilogy for me. She's not a big fan, which I'm okay, whatever. <laughs> um, but I, I saw the prequel trilogy and, and I think my fandom within Star Wars has only increased as I got older. And I think I started really becoming a, a massive fan in high school when it was something that I was able to just identify with for no particular reason. I mean, I don't, sure. I don't see myself in like any of the characters in a big way. I don't feel like Star Wars understands me any more than anything else did, but <laughs> it was, it was always there. And that right. was a really important thing to me. I'm a, I'm a foreign service kid. So my mom was a diplomat and we moved around a bunch. And so I, I had a, I had to learn to let go of the things that I feared to lose, right? My friends <laughs> yeah. and that sort of thing. Um, and but I, I knew that Star Wars, in some way, shape, or form, was always going to be there. I could always sit down and watch Empire, which is my favorite movie. Um, when I was just feeling like there wasn't, you know, anything else around for me uh, to, to be there to support me, and and even today, it's like sometimes I'll just throw on a movie when I'm, you know, just feeling a little off. Um, mm. Even though I I now. And more socially smart, emotionally intelligent. Sure. And I have plenty of different friend groups to fall back on. But, you know, and, and graciously, I can share my love of Star Wars with a lot of people that I know who also, you know, share in that same enjoyment. So I, I think that's that's such an interesting point. And it's one of the, you know, I started this show two years ago because I wanted to. I mean, initially, my show was just going to be a show about uh, interviewing other podcasters because there were so many cool podcasts that I yeah. was listening to. I was like, I'm we'll talking to them. Um, and but what I found is, and what I love about doing the show and what I love about Star Wars is it, you know, I, I've said it before, you know, when I was a kid, I saw Star Wars when I was seven years old. Um, <laughs> and it was just Star Wars, it wasn't a new hope. Right. Um, yeah. but me and my friends that were Star Wars fans, it was like it was like this little club. It was like the you know, six or seven of us, <laughs> and we were the Star Wars nerds in school. Yeah. And then the internet exploded and we began to realize that it's it's something that's shared by so many people yeah. and and it's so great to hear you talk about how that you know it's it's a shared love and when you see somebody wearing a a, a baby yoda shirt or uh, uh you know a, an, <laughs> an empire strikes back <laughs> shirt or yeah. or even just you know some random like I, I was wearing one of my podcast shirts uh, uh to to my chiropractor uh, a week ago and he was like star wars i love star wars and we spent, <laughs> you know the whole time he's cracking my back and he's moving me around he's like asking, so what did you think of when kylo ran and i was like okay yeah i'm fine um but it was <laughs> but it was that door opener right and now the relationship is every time I, i've been there yeah. twice since then and each time he's like you know i was thinking when ben kenobi fights maul in the desert i was like yeah. wow, okay cool um but it's great because it's it's such a, a door opener did you find when you went off to 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 college because mm -hmm. so it's interesting a lot of the people that like for example uh my friend scotty jerry who i think is is with us in the the chat right now um he's a prequel baby he's you yeah. know he grew up with that and um and but it, there's these different entry points to star wars so mm -hmm. your entry point was actually the prequels or the original trilogy my entry point was the original trilogy okay. but i i would say too like that was at a point where i was like oh cool they got like lightsabers and that sort of thing and they're fighting and like so i didn't you know i didn't appreciate it on the level that i can now about right. like the themes and such things um and so between watching the ot and probably like the span of a couple weeks and then maybe a year later watching the prequels when my mom finally caved in and like let me get the vhs of them i it's all kind of a blur right um so i would say though that i i appreciate the ot and the prequels pretty much in the same light mm -hmm. um but because the sequel, like there was such a span between when I'd been in introduced to like all the Star Wars that kind of had been out by the time I was around. And then the sequel trilogy, I actually got to experience in the theaters. Same with Rogue One and Solo. Yeah. And so I, they, they, they occupy different spaces in my mind. Hmm. Um, interestingly enough. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, and it's so interesting too, because it is, you know, I, I love, obviously I love all Star Wars because I spend sure. many more hours <laughs> than I probably should talking about it. But, um, I do compartmentalize. I compartmental. Yeah. I I put Clone Wars and Bad Batch over on one side. It's still part of the story, but it's a different type of Star Wars, and and it's also different types of fans, right? The people who yeah. you have a conversation with. If I'm going to dive deep and talk about, you know, where did Omega come from? I'm probably not having that conversation with my dad, who loves all science fiction and and yeah. horror stuff. But we'll talk right. Star Wars and Mando. Um, so it, it it is interesting that that you say that as well. If somebody who's been you know, you there's not been a time when there hasn't been Star Wars in yeah. your life. Yeah. 
nor will there probably ever be. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. That was a a very depressing notion I had one day. It was like, I'm probably not going to live to see all the star Wars at this point. And it's a very, well, that got dark pretty quick, but the, um, (laughs) the, the, the point here being that um, it, they are, they are very different. So are you a a star Wars fan that catches everything on Friday mornings when it hits Disney plus, or are you uh, yeah, generally, if it's not if I'm not staying up until three o'clock in the morning with my friends <laughs> watching it over Discord, I, I watch it shortly thereafter when I wake up. Um, you know, sometimes sometimes my girlfriend and I will watch it together, but oftentimes it's me, her, and like the rest of my like four or five friends that watch Star Wars just kind of hop it on Discord at yeah. three a.m. my time. Some of them live out in L.A. You know, it's like so for some of them it's more convenient, <laughs> but. Right. But I, I do watch it all. But, you know, one of the things that I am not is a collector. Hmm. I really I know so many people who are like right there when stuff drops. And yeah. I I just haven't done any of that. I mean, my friend, my best friend, Mike, has been my best friend for a long time. I'm trying to struggle. <laughs> he made me this wonderful wood print of Mando. And that's behind me. And he also made yep. that's very difficult to see. But that was my old Funk Lord Vader logo that wasn't maybe super copyrightable or anything. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, so I've got my own little special bits of merch and, you know, things I collect, I guess, but not, yeah. not figures or anything. Is it a, is it a generational thing? Do your friends collect that are Star Wars fans or no? I mean, I, I, well, I have a friend who collects Funko pop type things, but I don't mm. know. That's not exclusive to Star Wars. Um, I think it maybe it's just the people I'm around, frankly. I, I think yeah. that the collecting is still probably a thing, but I mean, I don't know many people my age who have a ton of dispensable income I, to right, put I think towards, that, you know, collector collector's items, especially those that are like considered a lot older and more valuable. You yeah. Know? Like I mean, you can drop however much money on a new black series, but if you want to get some of the older stuff, the price yeah. is just yeah. It goes up. It definitely goes up. And yeah. it's funny because, well, I mean, obviously I have a problem with Black Series <laughs> helmets uh, behind me. But, um, yeah, it de- it's definitely uh, – it, it's it's a little – and it's funny because I think that's – there's this weird sort of discourse uh, that talks about um, the state of Star Wars because oh. of things flying off the shelves or not and what sells and what doesn't. But um, – um, I, I think you're right. I think a lot of it has to do with where you started your Star Wars journey, what you want to buy. Yeah. I it's funny, Mandalorian for me has has pulled me in, and that's like I collect Mando stuff nice. and Empire Strikes Back uh stuff. Like that's kind of my my two areas. <laughs> and every helmet that Black Series puts out for some reason, that's that's been my thing. <laughs> but that's I think that's because when I was seven and I saw the stormtroopers, I always wanted a full stormtrooper. Yeah outfit never did it so it's just sort of some some sort of issue honestly i keep telling my friends who do cosplay you know if there was anything that i was going to do and invest a significant amount of significant amount of money in Mm -hmm. it would be making my own bounty hunter cosplay from star wars like a new one like i do everything from concept design to the final prints and finishes and everything um because there's there's a great community out there like the 501st does all the 501st stuff and you've got mando communities that have all different kinds of uh, SDL files that you can print your own Mando stuff. Yep. But I just want to be different, you know. <laughs> I want to get like my own bounty hunter thing, and I'll make a whole voice for it, right? Because yeah. that's what I do, and that's who I. Am. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, I mean, one day maybe I'll maybe I'll have my own bounty bounty hunter <laughs> cosplay one day. That would we'll be see. that would be awesome. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, your voices and your TikTok sure. uh, situation. So as I said before. Um, I, I knew I was I was like a little bit out of my element when I was go- I I just I I'm not a TikTok guy. Is that like where your primary focus is? I I and I'm probably going to edit that out of the the audio version because that sounds re- I'm hearing it in my ears and thinking God I sound old. But the <laughs> I mean were you all like did you did you go to TikTok as an opportunity to uh, to promote your voices or were you just playing around and it just sort of became what you did and what you became known for. How did that work for you? You know, a good business person would probably go to TikTok nowadays with the idea that they would be promoting themselves. And eventually I did have that mentality, which is largely why I don't do much TikToking anymore. Mm. But um, I, I started because I was bored (laughs) and realized that there were opportunities for me to reach an audience and maybe get my name out there a little bit, excuse me, get my name out there a little bit. And it worked after that video. I had a lot of different people reach out to me and I have a bunch of connections in Star Wars now. And that's really exciting. 
But for the most part, TikTok as a platform is not something that I'm intimately involved with anymore. Um, and even when I was kind of at the peak of my popularity, when I was still putting out content fairly regularly, it was still me trying to have the most fun I could. Right. And I think that largely with the more people that follow you, like, look, your 15 seconds a day of internet fame is a really cool thing. Cause it's great for people that you knew in high school to come up to you and be like, dude, I saw you on the internet the other day. What the heck? Like, that's crazy. <laughs> Glad to see you're doing okay. Um, and that's all well and good. But then honestly, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of pressures around just having any sort of social media presence. Mm -hmm. um, especially when people start throwing around the words influencer and that sort of thing. Right. I am. That makes me really uncomfortable because like at the end of the day, my end goal is to be in a Star Wars project in a formidable capacity and um, have my names in the credits. Right. And like, I want to do voice acting like that's, that's the idea, but I do not need this giant pressure of like my children are watching you and you right. need to, you know, um, because it's just, I, I, you know, it, it's, it's, you're doing two things at once. You're the social media person and you're the voice actor. And I think for the most part, you know, while it's fun to engage with people who also love Star Wars and are, are fans of what you're doing, it's a lot of pressure, especially when the negativity comes in mm. because there, there can be quite a bit of it. Um, you know, I, I remember when, when I put out that video, it opens with Obi-Wan and most people's uh, criticisms were, Hey, that Obi, that, you know, that Obi-Wan's kind of lacking and you know, it's a fair criticism, right? It's not sure. super substantive, but like, sure. Okay. And I'm somebody who understands how to take criticism and when to take it and from whom or, and, and et cetera, et cetera. So that didn't hurt me much, but you know, you take somebody who's maybe younger than me or, you know, perhaps doesn't, isn't quite acclimated to this idea of taking criticism. Like I'm, I love public speaking. Right. So that, those concepts are not foreign to me, but if you take somebody who's just feels comfortable making a TikTok but isn't comfortable getting in front of the class, the moment criticism hits the page, like that could be a huge sure. negative impact on their psyche. And I just, it even started to affect me. Like that's yeah. why I stopped doing stuff back in September because I thought, you know, I'm going to focus on professionally developing my my own voiceover stuff and applying to summer internships. Actually, slightly tangential, and this is the first time anybody who follows me is hearing about this, but I have a internship at NASA this summer. Um, it's my second internship at NASA. That's far. fantastic. That's yeah, great. I'm very yeah. excited. But you know, and so it's, it's balancing this whole idea of, well, I'm going to college as an engineer and yep. I'm going to see that through, um, you know, despite the fact that there's been plenty of opportunities presented to me in the realm of voice acting. Cause there's, I don't know. You just can't be for your education. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and, but also I have an enormous passion for this voice acting thing and I've got a knack for it, which I'm incredibly grateful for. And I've got people that support me and I've got, you know, different people willing to give me grants for equipment and, and that <laughs> sort of thing. You know, I have ecosystems and infrastructures on both sides that are really conducive to just me doing other thing that I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think TikTok at the end of the day was too much of a time draw, too much of a I'm trying to find the appropriate words for it, too much <laughs> of a, at times a downer, honestly, yeah. Yeah. that just made it difficult for me to do the other stuff that I want to do in life. Yeah. But well, it's interesting because it, it seems like you were, were you, did you consider a voice acting slash voiceover career before you found the TikTok fame yeah. or yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think for the most part, TikTok legitimizes what, I was thinking before okay. I had trained under um, Melissa Liebart. She's an Emmy award winning voice actress. And, and I've kind of been introduced to that kind of thing. Cause like I knew how to do the voicings. Mm -hmm. I've, I'd already been listening to like compilations for years of like radio voicing. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean like, what does that sound like? What does your average ad on the YouTube's, you know, spotlight before a video sound like um, I, I, I had a feel for it, but, to actually train under somebody who was in the business and understood was a different, you know, ball game. And, and that was like not last summer, but, but the summer before. And so I'd already been kind of allowed to have my foot in the door and TikTok and having those impressions kind of blow up on a social platform legitimized the fact that I was like, Oh, okay. So I, 
I could do this. People do think that I'm okay at these whole voices and, and all that stuff. So maybe just maybe there is a chance that I'm going to be recognized at some point. And maybe there's a chance that I'll be picked up by somebody. And I mean, certainly I, I remember putting out certain videos on my Twitter, which is actually where most of like the celebrities, the people who actually do the voices professionally for Lucasfilm. Mm -hmm. I mean, M Mark Hamill liked two of my tweets and that <laughs> was something special, man. I got to tell yeah. you, I did a, I did a Mark Hamill voices compilation where I did, you know, Luke, of course, but also the Joker and um, characters that he did and, and various other projects like Avatar Lost Airbender and so on. I did one for, um, James Arnold Taylor's voices, you know, he does Obi-Wan in the Clone Wars and he yeah. does Johnny Test, among other voices, and um, Freddie Prince Jr., uh, Sam Witwer liked my mall impression. I mean, it's and it's just so fun to interact with people in that way because, you know, it's it's really I use the word already, but it's really it's an affirmatory thing. It's like yeah. the person who is that they are that voice. Right. Right. And they looked at your voice and they're like. Not bad, kid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love James Arnold Taylor's comment to you oh. where he said, uh, I can go on vacation now. And if and only there were somewhere to travel to. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. So Which, that, I mean, no. now, you know, if you got a vaccine, go get your vaccine. Go for right? it. Go, yeah, go yeah. vax. Um, so, what's your favorite Star Wars impression to do? Oof. Um, it changes, but I think, I think for the longest time, I've really enjoyed doing both Anakin and, and Obi Wan from. The prequel era in tandem because they just have the i mean they have the best chemistry honestly uh between the clone wars series fleshing out the relationship and the dynamic that they have in the prequel movie trilogy it's just so fun to do silly situations that they're both in because they're, they're so they're different but similar in some ways and anakin is actually one of the easiest impressions in my opinion to do I really don't have to do much to my own voice to change it. I, I start here where I'm normally, and I'm going to take a drink of water, <laughs> but I start here and then I just kind of lighten things a little bit. And like, we're almost there. Like I'm just speaking from like more like the, the back of my throat. Everything's just kind of coming out instead of me kind of being more cemented. <laughs> and so we're talking like this and then, and then you add a little bit more, punctuation and he's got this weird thing where he almost sounds canadian at times and like it's a little strange wait is is he actually canadian he might be i actually i don't know that i've ever looked that up now that's yes a that hayden christensen is canadian so that it makes sense all See, right well there you go thank I'm you for coming on the show right you've now. learned something from me now this, it's rare <laughs> when most there of my go. guests walk away going what what did i get out of that 45 minutes but you <laughs> You now have now learned. I know. Yeah. Well, but, yes, he definitely has that. Yeah. That's, that's so I mean, but funny. that like, and that's where it is. That's all I have to do. And like for other voices, I mean, it's considerably more involved and I have to sit there and I have to do like, I don't, there's probably an actual name for this in the industry, but a lot of people when they're doing voices have Sorry, a specific. I'm having trouble hearing you. <sighs> Thanks, Siri. <laughs> uh, they do a specific primer or, or line that gets them into the thing. Like. You know, if I'm doing an Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Clone Wars, Anakin, the council, you know, something uh, like that. And they say a line that like gets them in there. Um, but I, I have to do that like several times. I've been working on, and I, I know this is something we were going to talk about at some point, but I've been working on D. Bradley Baker clone impression because I've had my Tamora Morrison, Jango Fett, Boba Fett clone, you know, Republic Commando down for a long time. But D. Bradley Baker's is like, for some reason, really difficult for me. So it's not there yet, but right. I, I sit there and I'm like, the name's Rix, but you can call me captain or sir. The name's Rix, but you can call me captain or sir. And I'm like, no, 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 I can't hear myself. So I take off my headphones and I go, the name's Rix, but you can call me captain or sir. And I'm like, it's not there yet. I'm like, it's <laughs> not there. There's something about the tonality, the pitch that I just like, it's lost on me. And then I have to sit there for another five minutes. But, um, you know, when I'm when I'm crafting an impression like I am right now with the clones, it's a lot of sitting down, watching, you know, top 10 Captain Rex moments on YouTube <laughs> right. like over and over again and just repeating the lines back to D. Bradley Baker on the other side of the screen. Yep. And until I'm like, yeah, I can't tell an appreciable difference that I also know that the audience would because. I, I've listened to my own voice for so long. 
obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I I know now that I've kind of done the TikTok thing that there's a certain amount that people just don't notice or don't care. Right. Um, when it comes down to how perfect your impression is for myself, I, I want it to be as close as possible, but you know, sometimes it's like, yeah, that little thing he does with like the, the attack on his T's, like, you know, no one's going to notice that. Um, yeah. no one except that, for go ahead. No, I was gonna say, do you find that the impression is more, is less sound and more inflection or I guess maybe it depends on the character. It does depend on the character. Yeah, absolutely. Like um, Han Solo. That's a tough one. It's actually a lot harder than than uh, than a lot of the other ones. And that's why I don't do it too often. Han Solo is really interesting because, I mean, Harrison Ford has such a manner about him. And that right. informs the way that he says things. He's like, you know, he's kind of like relaxed and, and a little sleazy. But also he can really dig into you and so there's a weird contrast there that you have to find a middle ground between um you know but also his his actual voice like the sound of it is massively different than mine Mm. he's a lot you know further down here but like if i go too far then i just sound like arthur morgan from red (laughs) dead redemption you know it's like (laughs) you know there's there's a there's a weird middle ground and for myself where i like i hear everyone's voice as its own thing and I can draw connections between your voice and somebody else's voice. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. It's so easy for me to be in the middle of impression and be like, ah, well, now I slipped into somebody else. Yeah. But the person across the room from me is like, what do you mean? No, you, no, you didn't. You're doing the same one. <laughs> and so part of part of doing the impressions is just get past that mental block and cement yourself in the space where you're like, you know, you're on the impression. You just got to keep doing it until you're done with the line or the, the whatever it is. Um, that's, that's one of those weird challenges that I, I'm like, Gosh, like if I could just explain this to you in a way that made sense, maybe, you know, but that, well, I mean, I, it, it does make sense. I mean, it's, sure. it's a, it's a, it's an art form. It's no different than me trying to explain, you know, what it's like, it's like when I, when I buy a new bass guitar and I tell my wife that it sounds different, it's got a different yeah. tone. She's like, no, it doesn't. They all sound the same. <laughs> they're both, they're all yeah. there. Um, yeah. I just want to quickly remind uh, the people who are watching us, if you want to win a t-shirt, you have to uh, comment with hashtag gonky to win a t-shirt and win one of our <laughs> brand new t-shirts. Second of all, start sending in. We have um, our good friend Nick Milky uh, managing your comments. Start sending in if you would like to see if we can challenge Kevin to perhaps do a, <laughs> an impression in a situation or something like that. So, like, for example, Kevin, if yeah. I, I know you love doing Obi-Wan and Anakin, so I'm going to throw you a softball. If Anakin and Obi-Wan suddenly found themselves on a podcast like this, how how might they handle that moment? <laughs> Wait, how did this happen? We're smarter than this. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> I joke, I joke, of course. But, no, I, yeah. I I love the way you could just jump right in. And I, I have watched your TikToks where you're like in the car with Anakin yeah. and, and Obi-Wan. Yeah. And it's that and I think that that's what makes that impression so good is the fact that it's that relationship, it's that personality, it's the it's it it's the the go between there. Yeah. Um well I'm and I might touch on that for a minute because one of those things that I think a lot of people don't really realize is, you know, one part of it is the impression and is being able to do the voice, but the other is like, well, okay, yeah. What are you going to say? Right. Like why, why do people want to stick around and actually watch? Um, you know, there's a, there's some dude right now and, and probably a team, frankly, of incredibly Mm -hmm. talented people who are doing a Tom Cruise deep fake account on, are you familiar with deep fakes? The, the idea of superimposing somebody's yes. facial structure on yeah. their own using computer AI modeling. Yeah. I saw, um, who is it? It was, oh, I think it was, um, I can't remember. It was some comedian who does, and, uh, is Bill Hader who does the, the really good, um, uh, Pacino. And then they put yes. Pacino's face over Bill yeah. Hader and it's, it's disturbingly <laughs> sweet, but <good>. there, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's it's crazy stuff. But I mean, you know, not only do you have the incredible, you know, the really, really knowledgeable, incredible team of, um, you know, CG artists who are doing the facial superposition and all that. Um, but also you've got the actor who's not only doing the vocal impression, which is one thing, mm. but he has to, you know, get the facial expression correct, too, for the AI to properly, you know, make the face look convincing. And he does the whole 
physical acting thing that you know the, the stuff that tom cruise i don't do with tom cruise so mm-hmm. like whatever but you know like that weird frustration that tom cruise always seems to have like that just like i'm always on the edge i'm on the edge of something i'm doing a thing you know and like that guy's like pulling so much weight there but you know that's all well and good except for the fact that you have to put him in an interesting situation that's going to make people actually stay and watch this whole viewer retention thing and it's like sure. that's the whole part of it that you know a lot of people don't appreciate um and so for me uh you know this idea of just improving my stuff and i'm like i'll just do a take and if i don't like that take scrub it and do kind of the same thing maybe i switch up the line but i just build my scene out and it and it helps it feel natural so like that one i did of anakin and obi-wan in the car and i think anakin ran over some younglings or something unfortunate like that <laughs> that was like you know last summer i was out shopping with my mom and my mom was like, all right, you can stay in the car if you want. I'm going to hop into Bell's outlet or something real quick. And I sat there in the car. And I was like, all right, I have nothing better to do. <laughs> I'm going to film a TikTok. And you just build out that scene from square one. And like in the middle of it, it was like, ah, he's going to run over some younglings. Get it? Because Anakin doesn't like younglings because he killed them. <laughs> right. And it's like, OK, sure. And and I don't, I don't know where I'm really going with this ranty segue, but, um, you know, the, it's it's not just the impressions that always has to come down to making sure that people are actually entertained by the content of what you're right so how did that that's that's a great segue to, to a question how did you end up with the decision to do the i love it when you call me senorita like how did you what was the decision that i'm going to take seven star wars characters and pull this line from from a song and just do it yeah. like, what inspires that so actually i can point you directly to another um very very well established voice actor now he's he's very popular both on instagram and on tiktok and probably other venues his name is lucas t arnold and he had been doing that for a while with various characters i mean he would just kind of compile different notable voice impressions from all over the place um he does a john mulaney i do a john mulaney and i'm sad because at some point i had filmed the video and i was planning to put it out and then he put out his first john mulaney video i was like <laughs> all right He's the king of that now. I can't do that without, you know, looking like I ripped him off. But he was doing, I love it when you call me Senorita as a format. And, you know, I, I, I feel bad about taking things directly from people. So what I tried to do, instead of just saying, I love it when you call me Senorita in the voice of a character, I tried to ad lib around it or in it or through it or whatever. And so, you know, for like um, Tarkin, right? You will soon find that I'm uh, far prefer the term senorita, like whatever, right? I mean, you switch up the actual format. And he then, I think at some point adopted that as well after we had an exchange over, you know, messaging and that kind of thing. Um, But it was one creator being inspired by another thing that, uh, you know, at the same time, a very similarly sized creator was doing. And, um, you know, there's there's a lot of those feedback loops especially on TikTok, where a lot of the idea is you know, instead of retweeting something and maybe adding a, a line or a pun that makes the below tweet funnier, uh, you know, you do a duet wherein you've got one person on one column and another person on another. And sometimes it'll be a thing like somebody reaches out of frame and the next TikTok over imposes their hand in the frame, like grabs a soda can or something and, you know, funny little iterations like that. Um, but definitely there's there's an ecosystem of Star Wars creators within TikTok that I was a part of for a long time that we all just kind of shared the same, oh, hey, there's this thing going around. If you want to make a video and it, it'll probably blow up, do this. Um, I think it was everybody kind of watching out for each other, which was interesting considering that that tends not to happen. I yeah, mean, it seems like it would be competition. More, I, it, yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like to me like it would be a, a pretty competitive yeah, space. It, but. It, and And it is, but I think what was really interesting was you were seeing a little bit of a kind of recycling of who was popular on the platform at the time that I was coming in. Mm-hmm. I can't speak to now cause I'm really not on the platform anymore, but like the star Wars creators either didn't exist or were just gone. Mm-hmm. And like now, nowadays I'm gone. Right. Right. Um, but there was this giant vacancy for star Wars content. And so a lot of us had started at the beginning of the pandemic and we were all like, Hey man, I got like 10, 20,000 more followers than you let me like highlight you in my video. Let's do a duet. Let's do a Mm. funny skit together. And it was just a lot of that back and forth between like tens of creators. Um, I've, I've got a friend who I'd love to meet at Star Wars celebration one day. His, his, you know, handle is mace 
A.H. Windu. Um, and he blew up one day because of a uh, uh, some pirate cosplay he did. But he's at like 600,000 followers now. And he was just doing Star Wars content for the longest time. Um, you know, and, and he and I had done, a, you know, a couple of things together. But it's just like there was this kind of mutual understanding of like, I'm going to help you out and you're going to help me out. And we're just all going to try to climb this ladder together because, you know, I, I do one thing right? Realistically, I'm hmm. people came and subscribed to my account for impressions. Right. And when I did anything that wasn't impressions, it wasn't received as well, because that's not what they were there for. Right. Um, and so, you know, that's as much as that's like an empowering thing, knowing what your audience is going to respond to. It's also really limiting. Because, hmm. you know, in the early days, I think my first TikTok I made was a skit about I was I was Kind of remarking like i was like oh my gosh the world is so different people are wiping down all their groceries <laughs> with you know clorox wipes and that sort of thing and so it was a video of a mom coming into the room like hey son have you wiped down your i don't you know your computer desk and i was like no and then the, the mom pulls out a sandal like get back here i mean it was like the silliest thing but it was not star wars it was not impressions it wasn't anything and i'd made a couple more skits that were just skit related and at some point your account becomes synonymous with star wars impressions guy and that's right. All people are going to respond to. Um, and so once you get to that point, you need the other creators to support you when you want to do something novel or you want to do something that, you know, your audience hasn't seen in a long time. Hmm. Um, and so, you know, if I was going to put out something like a Star, a, a Star Wars skit that was in some way different or, oh, I, I have a great example. I did this charity event with this uh, streamer who's now actually fairly popular, uh, Mr. Little Schmidt. And he was doing a charity event for, uh, I, I forget this specific charity, forgive me, but um, you know, it was bringing together a bunch of the Star Wars creators and we had all these stretch goals and I would post a video like, Hey guys, just a reminder on November 15th, we got this charity thing going zero reception hmm. because nobody was interested in it. Right. I mean, right. and, and like as somebody who's done social media, I'm sure that like you can really you put, you put out something that isn't the norm and people are like, what? Right. You like, they question it and you'll have like a few devoted fans or like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. But for the most part, if, if something comes across somebody's Twitter feed or their TikTok feed, they question it. Or they just move on. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I imagine that's part of the challenge is it's such yeah. a short attention span, right? It's absolutely it's it's this is Star Wars impression guy, but he's you know he's doing something about a Hawaiian shirt. I'm not interested in this. And yeah. So they, yeah. 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 For sure. I mean, I I, I <laughs> the Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. I had a foray <laughs> into just like absurdist dad humor, um, where I created this character called Golf Dad. And Golf Dad's whole thing was I feel making, seen. I feel making, <laughs> <laughs> he, he was he was it was making fun of this the idea that like TikTok there's so many people on there that millions and millions of views and likes all come from just like doing a you know TikTok dance. I'm like I I can't dance right. I'm a 19 year old white dude. I really you think I you know. So the whole thing was I'll just kind of make fun of that by throwing on a pair of you know shorts, a Hawaiian shirt, and a. a bucket hat and just do whatever comes to mind and it was just like the silliest dances and the first video did like fine for what it was and i just had so much fun with that that i did a couple more but you know i i had like a little subculture of people who liked golf dad and everyone else in the comments was like go back to doing star wars content or else yeah. i'll unfollow you and i was like that's fine <laughs> if you want to like okay you know i mean i, I would at the time the tiktok creator fund wasn't a thing i was not making any money out of this mm. right i mean nowadays i, I don't either <laughs> um and so it was like i had no appreciable stakes which mm. can be a liberating thing um yeah i imagine but yeah yeah well i mean if you had the one the the, the that video i mean it blew up at 4.2 million and and i imagine the pressure to try to continue to do that must have been oh yeah a, a challenge as well i it was and i remember that after that video came out, it was just an, I just posted incessantly um, trying to do more of the same stuff. And that's, you know, in, in retrospect, I look back and I'm like, yeah, of course that wasn't going to work again. Like the algorithm favored you on that day at that time for some right. unknown reason. But, you know, I sat there and, and I'd accumulated so many more, so many people from that one impression. I think I was at like, I don't remember quite specifically, but it was in the 20 to the 30,000 probably followers range. And after that, I was like 100,000 and something. Mm. And I was like, Oh, now I have this many more people that just want to see star Wars stuff. 
but I do like voices in general. So I had planned out I was going to do a Harry Potter impressions. I was going to do a Lord of the Ring impressions. I was going to do Avatar The Last Airbender, Korra. And I had all this stuff planned. And I was like, this isn't how I do things. Mm. Like, I mean, it it would make sense for plenty of people to do it that way. But I'm like, this is this isn't I just wing stuff. I just do stuff when it comes to my mind. I'm like sitting at my computer writing an essay. I'm like, oh, that'd be a good TikTok. I'm like, that's what I spend my break, you know, doing. I, I take a 30 minute break and I make a TikTok mm. and then I go back to work. I it, I don't sit. It's not a business for me. Right. right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was what was really ultimately. Honestly, that video was great to have my 15 seconds of fame, but it ultimately led to me not being on the platform because it was so restricting in terms of like, yeah, Kevin Cabral, the Star Wars impressions guy. And I trust me when I say like, when I come on shows like this, I love to be that yeah. because I get that. Like, you know, you'll understand the nuance. The audience will understand the nuance of it. But when you're on TikTok and you're just scrolling I and mean, you've seen a hundred videos already in that session and you get to me, it's the Star Wars impressions guy, yeah. um, which is fine as long as I am in star Wars one day, <laughs> but <laughs> if it works you know, to your advantage, yeah, yeah no, that, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. It, it definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, <clears throat> so, so now since you're the star Wars impressions guy, I'm going to ask you to, to, to do a couple things. We got a couple of uh, interesting requests here. Let's see. Um, pull up the, the chat here. We had, um, okay. So, um, do you do Indiana Jones? Ooh, Indy. You know, I've never done indie explicitly before, right? I mean, I've done a Han. Mm -hmm. And at one point, I was considering doing indie. It's not, <laughs> it's not the years, it's the mile. <laughs> yeah. See, that's that's difficult. It's hard I'm to still do. Like, I gotta, it is, it is. <laughs> um, and I haven't done my Han in a while. So regrettably, I probably couldn't do an Indiana Jones any kind of justice. But that would be an interesting one to explore. So there you I mean, go. Raiders is like, I mean, I love Empire. It's my favorite yep. movie, but like Raiders is close behind. Yeah, Raiders, mm -hmm. it's, it's my... It's such a classic. I, I told this story not too long ago. My, uh, I introduced my son, who's eight years old, to, um, uh, to, to Indiana Jones. And his Star Wars uh, engagement, his, his Star Wars film um, entry was the sequels. So we're watching Raiders and he says, that guy looks like a young Han Solo. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're, you're not wrong, son. You're not wrong. You're on the uh, right track. <laughs> so we have, uh, how about uh, JD Sleesman? He's one of our, our patrons, a great guy as well. Um, he wants to hear some Joker. What do you got? Ooh, some Joker. Okay. All right. Now, I know this one requires the physical piece. It's I saw your video physical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and also, well, the question too is like, which Joker, right? Because there's the, there's the Mark Hamill Joker. There's the Cameron Monaghan Cal Joker. There's the um, there's the Joker from from the the Nolan films. Yeah. Um, there's so many different Jokers. Goodness, I I know I did a Mark Hamill Joker at one point, and I'm trying to like find that in my brain right now. <laughs> Oh, Batman. Oh, I need a line to say because I don't have anything to say on the spot right now. But um, <laughs> if you have any ideas, please let me know. Now, you also do you do, do you do the other? That's really great. Do you do the other Jokers as well? No, <laughs> <laughs> frankly. <laughs> I felt like putting that out there just to just, be like, oh, well, you know, man, you know, perhaps I no. could, but uh, no, 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 I don't do this. Um, regrettably, uh, regrettably. Yeah. Um, what about um, um, what about some Luke Skywalker? Oh, uh, Luke is and he has such a good progression in the original trilogy. I remember um, s sitting there thinking like after the Mando ep spoilers, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> after the finale of Mando season two came out. I was like, oh, my gosh. I need to see more of this Luke with <laughs> um, you know, mighty Jabba. I'm sure you'll love these two droids to be your personal assistants. I mean, he almost like in when he's negotiating with Jabba, he sounds like he could be like analogous to Siri. You know what I mean? Like he's right up there with like, oh, I need, you know, young Mark Hamill as my AI voice assistant. Um, but I was going to go to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. But it's a whole nother year. You know, like, I mean, there's the whiny of episode four. Right. There's the, oh no, I'm hitting my hero's journey puberty in episode five. Right. And then there's the, he's a Jedi. And in episode six, you know, 
I am a Jedi like my father before me. I can't leave you here. I've got to save you. You already have, Luke. Tell your sister. You already have. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Sebastian Shaw. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was very good. <laughs> That's that's great. Yeah. Um, let's see what else do we what do we have here? Um, what did your what were your thoughts on um, uh, on seeing Tarkin in Rogue One? Because that that kind of goes mm. to your deep fake. I mean, obviously it was not just a deep fake, but did that strike you as as believable, or did you go fall into the uncanny valley? I let's see when did Rogue One came out. So Force Awakens was 2015. Rogue One was 2016, right? I think. I think so. so yeah. I had just gotten into high school. Mm -hmm. I started high school in 2015. I remember because me and my eighth grade friends were all excited about the Force Awakens coming out, and then we all graduated and didn't go see it together. Um, but Rogue One, I think I was like still too young to really care about yeah, the that. fact that like it wasn't a real person i was like oh that's tarkin from like episode four and he's not dead yet because we're before that okay yeah. yeah um but like nowadays when i watch it i'm like ooh, hmm mm, yeah definitely want to watch that on a smaller screen yeah for sure <laughs> uh because i mean definitely the the i mean an ilm right they're crazy with the effects that they do but the technology has come so far since then i mean you've got people like um Corridor Digital, they're a channel on YouTube, yeah, just a, yep. a conglomerate of some guys and, and gals and thems and theys, and and they're all just making some really awesome content. Um, and they're like a bunch of people, right? I mean, it's not like an ILM sized team, but they, you know, they made their own Luke Skywalker, and I thought that was pretty good, and they did that with a not ILM budget, right? Um, and yep. I think definitely like if they were to release a special edition of Rogue One. Hopefully that would just include some changes to Tarkin and like maybe not a lot else because right. I think that's a pretty darn good film. <laughs> it's a fun movie. It yeah. really is. Yeah. And it's interesting. I love I love the 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 role that Tarkin's playing in yeah. the animated series and stuff like that. Oh yeah. But, and uh, that's Steven Stanton. He's a he's fantastic, yeah. Yeah. Um we have, uh, so I Nick, saw Watto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me about your can, do you do a Watto? I, I do and I have done. Um let's see. Nubian <laughs> Republic Greta's done. They have no liquid around here. Oh, get back to work, Annie. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a fun one. That is a fun one. We have a request from Nick, our guy in the back there, saying he wants he'd like to hear Zeb being annoyed with Baby Ooh. Grogu. Zeb, okay. All right. I did a Rebels Impressions video. Mm -hmm. and I don't know that I've done Zeb since. So <laughs> I'm going to struggle to find him. Um, Zeb, Zeb, Zeb. Big man. Big alien. <laughs> based on the concept art of Chewbacca. If you didn't already know that, you probably yeah. did. Uh, <laughs> <It's a FaceTime laughs> leave. Uh, my phone's killing me today. I need to <laughs> just kind of eat that over there. Um, okay, I'm struggling. Honestly, though, I'm probably struggling to place Zeb in my, in my headspace right now. But right. if I watched a video and I could come back and do this later. <laughs> <laughs> No problem. Um, why don't you maybe just give us a sort of a rundown of some of your your favorite impressions and maybe uh, yeah, uh, just kind of kind of give us. You don't have to say Senorita, but if you want to, you know, give us a <laughs> sort of a a playlist. Let's see. Well, there's Anakin Skywalker, voiced by Hayden Christensen in the prequels. I'm so frustrated, and I'm also young, and Padme's older than me. But wow, I'm really attracted to her, and I don't like sand. And then there's Obi-Wan Kenobi. This one is James Arnold Taylor's Kenobi from The Clone Wars. Oh my, Satine, I would have left the Jedi Order had you but said the word. Um, then there's Darth Maul Kenobi. <laughs> he's, he's a tough one, particularly because I always have to like bring my microphone really close <laughs> to my face. Because, I mean, my voice is up here. And even when Sam Witwer is just talking normally, he's like down here, you know, I'm like Sam yeah. Witwer, you know, I, I am a voice actor in it. Um, and so for him to get to Maul is considerably less effort for me to get there. <laughs> uh, that was Maul. Um, we've got Emperor Palpatine. And he's got a bunch of different iterations, so many different voice actors. But, Do you have a favorite voice actor for Palpatine? Um, honestly, Ian McDermott, just standard Palpatine is probably my favorite, but like the closest second is Sam Witwer because he did a like knock 
out of the park job with him. Yeah. Um, after sadly the voice actor for Palpatine passed away in the middle of production for the mm -hmm. Clone Wars. Um, so I mean, Sam Witwer is like so talented. Like if I if I could meet you know any of the on the voice actors, you know who've played a bunch of different characters, Sam Witwer is like easily up there. <laughs> um, let's see. So that was Palpatine. Oh, Mister Jaja Boots, <laughs> Mister Yahamasov, <laughs> Mister on the around the galaxy fan talk show. Repeat, hi, Pete. <laughs> 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 you know, honestly, now ever, as I get older, I actually appreciate Jar Jar more. Yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, you know, because as a kid, I'm sure I found him plenty entertaining, but <laughs> I understand that the general reaction to him was not positive when the prequels were coming out uh, scotty jero hanging out in the uh in the chat is uh he's a big uh he's a big jar jar fan and uh, oh heck yeah <laughs> yeah man ahmed best is the best um <laughs> let's see so that was jar jar i did a luke you know but i'll do more luke it's okay luke is actually really similar to anakin in a lot yep. of ways i'm gonna be honest so you know luke is just maybe more refined mighty jabba blah 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 uh when when mando has it's so funny I, i'm sure you've seen the memes floating around but you know when when mando sees luke for the first time he's like are you a jedi and luke's just like no 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 i'm not a, no, i'm not a jedi i'm just a dude in here with a laser sword whatever I, anyway it just always makes me laugh um i do a mando usually with post-processing because of the bucket right mm -hmm. weapons are part of my religion why are you using your hand to do the, do the thing with your hand? <laughs> um, and, and I think what's really interesting about his is for a while on TikTok, I wasn't using post-processing. So I was like straining my voice so much to make it sound like I was in the helmet without having anything over my head, which was really fascinating because that's like, that's all we hear him. Like right. we don't hear him much without his helmet off. And so there's really not a lot of content to, to derive a voice out from and, and so when his when helmet is off he's just kind of quiet he's just kind of yeah scaring. <laughs> yeah and so i just like to by default my voice was like all right i guess we got to do that sound and so that's what i try to put out it was fascinating um let's see who else um yeah i mean there's plenty i you know of course now is the time i blank right <laughs> <laughs> camera's rolling mike's on like, uh, uh, i don't know <laughs> I, don't, I don't know star wars why am i here uh... <laughs> a java off oh do you do a java i was in a um there was these guys the 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 blue milk company you have to uh blue bantha milk company they do uh they they do scripts um that are ai generated and then they oh, do table yes. reads of them and they're hilarious and they they pulled me into job and my job is no good i just uh, i happen to have inherited the job role for one of their <laughs> their shows um but uh, yeah my my job is not that good your job is good though i heard it's your job. you know it's okay for somebody who weighs like two and a half pounds <laughs> <laughs> did you want to go back it's just so it's so hard for me to get down to those lower ranges where I sound like I have a triple chin, you know. Um, that's the thing about the Java is it's it's like it's it's down there somewhere yeah, because it's there's like, like a, there's there's also a lot more um, there's a lot more processing on his voice than yeah. people realize. I think, yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. Um, I don't actually know the original person who did the Java voice lines, but I have, I have to imagine they don't sound anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. I hope not. Wow, that'd be hard to talk to. Uh, yeah. Did you do Salacious Crumb? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, what? I mean, he, he's got a laugh, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but I don't know what it sounds like off the top of my head. I just know he's small and annoying. And <laughs> but... Uh, yeah. That's great. That's he was cool. my profile picture for a while there. Yeah. Salacious B. Crumb. See, yeah. you're false advertising. I, I know. I know. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm going to get sued by somebody. At night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have a, a 10 question segment of the show. Heck and yeah. So what I'll do is I'll give you this. And it, tell you what, why don't you, you can give your answers, but pick a, pick a, uh, your favorite voice to do them and have that, that work good. out for you. That'd be cool. Yeah. All sounds right. Good. So what uh, you answered the question, but I'm going to ask you the question again. Anyway, what is your favorite Star Wars movie, TV show, or book? Okay, favorite Star Wars movie, TV show, or book? Hands down, has got to be The Empire Strikes. <laughs> that was me trying to do a Vader. <laughs> the Empire Strikes Back. Um, Vader's great with post processing, but again, coming from skinny white dude, not so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, Empire Strikes Back. It's just, it's such a perfect sequel, um, yeah. and I, I don't, I, I have nothing else to say about it. It's perfect. 
It, and I will uh, stand by that. What else do you need other than it's perfect? I think this yeah. works. <laughs> okay, so name one actor you'd like to see in a Star War. Oh yeah, so uh, he's this he's this uh, relatively unknown actually. His name is Kevin Cabral. <laughs> <laughs> I I joke. Um, this isn't even really something I've given a lot of thought to. Um, but I think at the end of the day, somebody that I'd like to see in a Star War. Well. Can I say somebody that's already been in a Star War? Sure. I want to see more John Boyega. I want to yeah. see a lot more John Boyega as Finn. Um, Cause I, there's so much that we, I, I feel that like there's so many directions that that character can go. And like Daisy Ridley too, bring her yeah. back. Um, you know, the whole, the whole cast, I think there's like their stories are, they have a, they have a nice little bow on it, but who's to say you can't wrap up that gift again. Gets sure. Around, right? It's the gift that keeps <laughs> giving, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like your uh, every kiss begins with Kenobi. I think that's what <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> that was a fun one. Um, um, if you could own any pet or critter from Star Wars as a pet, um, what would it be? Generally, not a fan of cats, but loath cat, right? I have yeah. to imagine they'd be a little bit different than like Earth cats. I hope so. <laughs> I'm not a cat person. <laughs> I'm way more of a dog person. Um, but then again, do I want to have to take care of a pet? Eh, I don't know. But I mean, the novelty, like of having that otherworldly pet. I mean, I think that that probably think a lot of cats. Are, that's a good call. I mean, they yeah. do seem like a little bit aggressive, but a little bit. Uh, you know. But like, maybe that's good because you're like walking your cat, right? <laughs> and like nobody's nobody's gonna jump you because you got a lot cat, and it's like, <laughs> you know. I, I love it's good. I love yeah. seeing them come to life in um, <laughs> in the in the Mando. It was so cool to see that. Yes, that was really neat. Um, what is your favorite Star Wars sound effect? That's difficult because Ben Burt is a genius and yes. isn't given enough credit. Um, gosh, you know, favorite sound effect. I I think everyone who is a fan of the prequels by default goes with the seismic imploder. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, on the on the slave one, and then like, and that's great. It's a great sound effect, but it's got to be, oh man, oh man, Droidica guns. Oh wow, yeah, they have such just like a signature sound profile to them. Yeah, and it's like by the time you get to the prequels, like you know, they have like the sound technology to make everything sound very full, and mm -hmm. so it's just. It's really nice. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, I think that I, I love that because I also one of my favorite sound effects is Padme's blaster because yeah. again, just different enough from the, yeah. the pew pew, but um, certainly certainly unique. That's there was there was something going around on Reddit the other day. Couldn't tell you what subreddit, but it was one of the Star Wars ones, and people were comparing the sounds of the. I'm gonna get like so corrected on this. The DL19, <laughs> I think it is, is the. Uh, heavy repeating blaster, the kind of machine gun that they have. Yep. And they were pair, uh, comparing the sounds from Mando's Stormtroopers with the DL-19 and the Star Wars 2015 Battlefront, which had impeccable, oh, yeah. you know, looks and sound design. Um, and they're slightly different. And like people were rationalizing it with like, well, they they, they don't have Tabana gas in, <laughs> you know, their blasters because the Empire is splintered. And so they don't have the resources. I'm like, Okay, sure, yeah. <laughs> that plus your you know boat, whatever. Could just be we used a different wave file, but otherwise, yeah, yeah it's whatever. Definitely, uh definitely yeah, we accidentally pitched up the MP3. I don't know what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Can you find the file? I can't find the file. All right. <laughs> um so uh who's your favorite droid? Clink. He's new, right? But he's the cutest friggin' thing I think I've ever seen. When he came on screen and he was like like me and my girlfriend absolutely flipped. We could not believe it. I mean, I need him in my life. Like it, I don't need anyone else. Right. Yes. If somebody yes. told me that I, I would never be able to see another person for the rest of my life. If I got destroyed, I would take it. I'd take it because he seems like such a lovely little tubby dude. Little I, arms and legs. <laughs> my comment on him was um, that he's both the most and least Star Wars robot I've ever seen. He's like, you could put, he's kind of sci-fi, right? He's kind of like traditional science fiction. Yeah, danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> right. But at the same time, he's so Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I I love him. And in fact, if you want to win a Gonky and Clink t-shirt, uh, now would be the right time to 
comment in the live chat with hashtag gonky. Cool. Hashtag All right, gunky. good. Um, <laughs> what's your favorite non Star Wars movie? My favorite non Star Wars movie. I think I mentioned it earlier. Raiders is a is a really top pick for me because I mean, again, you've got Harrison Ford. You've got George Lucas involved in some capacity, but I know this is it's a Spielberg film. Right. And Spielberg's great, too. Um, John Williams did the score, which is mwah, brilliant. Um, and the story is so just tight and good. And like, mm, I guess he's a, a guy punch up some Nazis. Like, come on. It's brilliant. And I love the film. And it's a great date movie. I would recommend it if anyone planning on going on a date. <laughs> It's a really it is, good. One. It's a great movie, and it's you know it's funny too because like there's a handful, and maybe it's Spielberg, <coughs> mm -hmm. but there's a handful of movies that are over twenty years old that still one hundred percent work, and yeah. that's one. And Jurassic Park, I will I will die on that hill that you could show that movie today, and it's sure. it still works just as yeah. well as it did then. So I mean, part of it's just that 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 charm that they have, where it's like they're not franchise stuff yet. You know what I mean? Right. And it's just kind of like we're putting out a movie when it's adventure. It's fun. I mean, E.T. is the same way. And that is also a Spielberg movie. I would yeah. Say. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, it is that same way, I would say. And it is a Spielberg film. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, they, there's they've got such a just a, a purity about them. That yep. I think that's a big contributing factor to why they're so we're watchable. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, next question. We're going to go. You you said you don't have a lot of collectibles, but of the collectibles that you have, or let me put it this way: if you could, if if you could just go and get any collectible, somebody said, "Here's a blank check. Whatever collectible you mm. want, go get it." What what would you go with? Whatever. Okay. So, like, what are our bounds here? <laughs> well, <Because> I'm. <laughs> Let's take like actual in movie props off the table, right? Like, because if you want like a full size, well, I mean, you could. That's your thing. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> look, okay. All I'm saying is that, and not that I wouldn't. I'm not advocating for anyone doing this, and I don't think it'd be a good idea. But there is currently an ILM prop, a very big ILM prop at the Udvar Hazy Space <laughs> Museum. It's true. Uh, it might be an X wing, and it might not be. <laughs> but you know i don't have a car so having an x-wing would be pretty nice right I that's think... all i'm saying and yeah. i'm not saying anybody should go take it and deliver it to me Correct. in a way that's safe and doesn't hurt anybody <laughs> it's not what i'm saying right? but that and particular I'd... collectible would be a nice one to hang it would from be your, so your nice ceiling. if i happened to have it and i cured it acquired it through legitimate means right sure yeah. of course yeah. yes well it's interesting because that leads very interestingly into the next question is if you could own any spaceship or vehicle from the star wars universe yeah would Which, it be an x-wing it no probably not <laughs> okay like that now because here's the thing right they have an x-wing prop but right you know yeah corellian ships they're nice they're regal would i go for the falcon probably not because it's beat the heck up right um and that's a bit of an issue because you know i might be like more computer savvy than like my mom um and most other people around me but i i mean it's the millennium falcon i can't do that by myself yeah. so i'd probably need something a little bit more consumer ready sure um you know there's no shame in a small cargo transport but I mean, if I could get away with somehow taking like the Imperial transport from um, Return of the Jedi that the Rebels end up acquiring. Oh, yeah. Some the, interesting uh, means. the Shuttle Tidarium? Yeah, Shuttle Tidarium. Shuttle Tidarium? What is your <laughs> operating number? Um, yeah, I if I could get something like that and just roll up to college and land right in front of my dorm room <laughs> with that. I mean, the amount of street cred, like, come on. It's like, cause it's sleek right. and it's imposing and nobody would want to mess with you. Plus, I mean, it's got some pretty heavy weaponry on it. If I, if I recall, it's, it's not too uh, bad. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Which I mean, yeah. self-defense, please. Let's be clear. <laughs> sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no school. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I, I do love that part of, of Jedi though, where it's, yeah. uh, you know, it, this is why the empire, didn't win because they're like it's an older code we were gonna let him go like no you you have a death star here that we've lost these things before yeah this code looks a little funky we were just gonna let it go yeah what yeah. do you think we should do darth eh. <laughs> yeah. yeah he was like i will do it myself yeah yeah i'm endangering the mission i shouldn't have come <laughs> 
beautiful. All right. Uh, <laughs> what's your favorite Star Wars moment? Favorite Star Wars moment. I was thinking about this last night because I was like, okay, it's probably going to come from Empire, but like where in Empire? And honestly, everybody likes to be like the I'm your dad or the I love you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but for me, for me, it's when Luke is just like hanging, dangling at the bottom of Cloud City mm -hmm. and he's like hopeless, right? He's, you know, really mad at Ben Kenobi because he didn't tell him that Darth Vader was his dad. He feels like he's got nobody. But you know who he does have? His sister. Mm. And he's just, you know, hanging there upside down. He's like, Leia, Leia. And the camera goes to the cockpit of the Falcon. And Leia's just sitting there like eyes wide open. Mm. And, you know, Lando's like, you know, t you know, touching the different mechanisms. And Chewie's doing the same thing. And Leia's like, Luke. And then the music swells, and yeah. she's like, "We have to go back." And the, you know, the Falcon does that thing in, you know, over the cloud. And I'm like, so glad back. you mentioned that because that is one of my favorite shots in so Empire. Bad. Is when the Falcon goes over the cloud or around the cloud, and kind of goes back toward the the clouds. Oh, it's just yeah. it's beautiful. But a close second moment, largely because of the music cue, is the very end of Empire, um, where I, I we get so many different refrains from the little light motifs that. Um, John Williams sprinkled in throughout the film. Um, and it's, you know, Luke gets his hand and it goes over to the window and Lando's like, we're going to go find Han. And Chewie's like, uh, <laughs> and then they leave on the Falcon and then, you know, arm around your your sister. And you know, you kind of don't know that yet. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the the music cue at the end there, John Williams is just an absolute genius and makes it, it makes me cry without fail every single time yeah. I watch it. Yep. Yeah. The thing that I love about about <coughs> Williams music, um, I've said this before, and it kind of ties to what we're saying about Spielberg movies is you can listen to a cue and know exactly what was happening on screen at that moment, just yeah. because it's so, it's so perfect for it. It's one of the reasons that I, when I'm doing homework, I, I don't listen to lyrical stuff. I have a playlist that I listen to and it is every piece of star Wars music with the exception of the animated stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and most of it is just, you know, John Williams, John Williams, John Williams, John Williams. <laughs> yeah. Cause I just, I just went to the album for a new hope, add them all. And then I went to <laughs> empire, add them all. And sometimes I listen to an individual one all the way through in chronological order. And absolutely. As somebody who's seen the film like a billion times, I'm like, yep, here's where they say that line. And Oh, that's not that little, you know, five seconds isn't in the film because they replaced it with a different one that they, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. David W. Collins has a podcast that, you must listen to where he he takes apart soundtracks not just star wars but the star wars ones are amazing but it's a it's a great podcast you have to yeah. check that out um and the the last of the 10 questions is what is your go-to star wars quote my go-to star wars quote i've got a bad feeling about this <laughs> <laughs> it's so applicable right yeah i mean you know and then because otherwise it's anybody who is in a relationship with people that like star wars it's the i love you I know, right? Yep. Which just gets annoying after a while. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I used to do that, you know, my mom was like, all right, I'm leaving for school. Love you, mom. She's like, I know. I was like, okay, really? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Sometimes you like it when I say I love you. Sometimes you don't. Like, can we just standardize this? <laughs> mom, it's a Star Wars line. Oh, yeah. okay. Got it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, great. Well, we're going to get to that t-shirt giveaway in Heck a second yeah. but I, i'm because i'm trying to remember all the ones you do i'm going to ask you to just say you're listening to around the galaxy or something like that and i'm going to fire some some characters that i know you do um and and get, get, see if you can get your head let's do into it man me. ready all right let's start with the easy one let's give you anakin you're listening to the around the galaxy fan talk show with pete fletzer love that one all right and obi-wan you're listening to the Around the Galaxy fan talk show. Thanks for being here. Excellent. Okay, one that you didn't do before that I love, and I think I think you do one of the better versions of it, is uh, Kylo Ren. <laughs> oh, that's right, <laughs> Kylo Ren. Yeah, Adam Driver is very interesting. Uh, I have the. I can't do. I I I've done the only cosplay I can do because a it's um it's it's fairly simple and b it doesn't require a lot of uh expenditure to create things that i have no skills to are is a is a kylo ren costume and i've, I've been that for halloween with the kids a couple yeah. times um but i can't do the voice so i don't say anything i'm just i'm silent kylo but would kylo say around the galaxy the star wars fan talk absolutely you're listening to around the galaxy the star wars fan talk show 
<laughs> he just sounds so grumpy. So grumpy. He, oh, he is though. I mean, he's you know, he's crazy. Actually, and I probably talked about this on some other, sh- um, you know, show or something. But I, when I was in my senior year of high school, I took the senior capstone theater class without having taken any other theater courses because I was huge in a theater in high school Great. and still am. But there's not really a lot of opportunities to do that right now. And part of the things that we did was we wrote, uh, directed acted in et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, by ourselves, these things called one person shows, which are mm-hmm. unique largely to um, this theater program in terms of high school seniors doing their own show. And I wrote a show about Ben Solo because it was a divergent thing from the actual canon. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see. I don't believe that the Rise of Skywalker trailers or anything had come out yet. No, they hadn't because The Last Jedi had come out. And I basically took the beginning of The Last Jedi and I made Ben Solo go in a direction of, hmm, yeah, I don't like where I'm going in my life. Hmm. I'm just going to like go be a hermit like Luke, right? And disconnect myself from the dark side, from the light side, from the whole thing. And eventually, once he'd kind of reconciled with himself, he founded an academy that taught like just the force, right? Mm -hmm. The balance. Because no one can be all good or all, or all bad. It's all about reconciling, you know, the truth of who you actually are. Because, I mean, people are flawed. There's no getting around that. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, part of the failings of the Jedi and the prequels were that they were very much unaccepting of those that were flawed. Like Anakin. I mean, he had mm-hmm. issues. But it, at, if the Jedi had like a therapy department, <laughs> none of this would have happened, right? <laughs> I mean, if Anakin had gone to therapy and be like, I'm afraid my girlfriend's gonna die and my mom just died i'm like oh my god you know then and and yoda had been like you know i don't know a trained therapist yoda been like "Mm, yes concerning that is let's find you some medication you know and like we would have been fine right right movies would have been boring but you know (laughs) a little bit boring (laughs) but it wouldn't have all happened but you know ben in my in my play realizes this and starts you know speaking to the balance Mm -hmm. and one of his um Padawans at this academy finds this journal, which Ben had basically used to like talk himself through his negative emotions. And, you know, it was Kylo Ren's journal, right? Mm. Now, I, and this is, this was a play intended for like an audience who hadn't seen Star Wars. So at the end of the day, it was a tale of a guy who couldn't accept his past and a kid who's through his innocence showed that like a person's a person and you just got to come to terms with who you are and move on, move past it become better, better yourself in that whole thing. Um, and so that's, that's what that show was about. And um, I have, so all that to say anyway, that I've made significant investments in the character of Ben Solo. Um, yeah. Did you want to see him redeemed? This is a dangerous question, but did you want to see him redeemed at the end of? Um, I figured he would be. Yeah. I figured he would be. I don't, I mean, I know there's a lot of, you know, people are like bringing Ben Solo back. I'm kind of like, eh. um, I think I would have liked to see, Somebody, and this is not my own original idea, but somebody on the internet, and I don't remember where I read it, but was talking about how they thought it would be cool if, you know, he kind of donned the Han Solo-esque getup and Mm. went and kind of did away with the remaining like First Order fragments and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Because, you know, yeah, the First Order is defeated because they defeated Palpatine and whatever, but in the same way that the empire still had its own subsidiary factions across the galaxy, like with Moff Gideon and maybe he's serving a higher power, who knows, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and all those different factions and whatever um, that same thing would happen with the first order. I mean, it's not, it's not like the Confederacy of independent systems where you can just defeat the capital ship and Oh no, no droid in the galaxy works anymore. (laughs) Um, You know, these are people with free will and that sort of thing. And so to see Ben go around and maybe more peaceably do away with those institutions would be an interesting way to have his character redeemed as opposed to the, in my opinion, this might be controversial (laughs) kind of off putting kiss at the end. (laughs) I don't know. I always felt that like, and like, I was, I'm not, a, I'm not a real ship kind of person. I just, I don't really care for that kind of stuff, but if, if any of y'all are, that's okay. Um, but I always felt like there was tension between Ray and Kylo, but more of a, you know, just an 
very, very personal connection. And I think that a kiss on the forehead, a kiss on the cheek or whatever, just would have been a lot more tonally consistent in my opinion, but right. Whatever. Right. Well, we, while you get your Kylo voice, maybe we can help our, our friend Matt and, and maybe if we could get uh, could, could Kylo apologize for killing Han. <laughs> he needs a deep, glass, a deep drink of water to get down there. I don't know if you can hear that. But the, <laughs> my phone's going off. And, if, and naturally, it's. Because you threw it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a spam call. It's. So I apologize, but right. um, it, it, spam is we... worth hearing. The um, oh yeah, oh the, yeah, the asteroid, the asteroid field. Belt. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, in a serious or a funny way, I have to question. I'll leave it. You're the you're the professional. I'll yeah. leave that to well, you. I mean, you know, because I don't I don't want to sit here and add to to Matt's trauma about <laughs> Han being killed. So I don't want to. You have no wait. idea. <laughs> <laughs> Han Solo. Look, I, I, I I'm 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 so. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I I did I did really like the bit in Rise of Skywalker when um kind of the the memory force whatever you want to call it because it wasn't a force ghost it was right. more of a force apparition I don't know um but I really like that there where where Kylo was gonna say you know I love you Dad and Han said I know I mean it was it was you know it was a little fan servicey but it was really. Yeah, it was really a nice little bit there. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was one of the. Uh, I, I have opinions on Rise of Skywalker, but it was one of the. It was. It was a highlight. I'll put yeah. it that way. Um, what about? Do you do Qui Gon Jin? No, not really. You yeah. know, I did. I did a Qui Gon because prior to the the my Senorita video blowing up, I did a. I did one for every single Star Wars movie. Okay, I think except for the sequels. Um, I hadn't gotten to that yet, and I did a you know, episode one Phantom Menace and I did a Qui-Gon and I think it was okay for the time, mm -hmm. but that was one where I learned it for the video and promptly forgot about it Yeah, because it's, it's he's got such a unique voice. He does Liam Neeson's. I mean, he's really, he's a good actor to know how to do an impression of, but in terms of what I was focused on at the time with the TikTok stuff, I was like, there's limited applications in my opinion right. for a Qui-Gon voice in my comedy videos. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, I'll ask you to do one more. You're listening to Around the Galaxy, but you got to throw a "You May Fire When Ready" at the end because I want to hear Tarkin. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Around the Galaxy fan talk show, and you may fire when ready. Excellent, that was great. <laughs> well, Kevin, I need you to now help us find a winner for our clink, uh, clinky and gonky, gonky and clink T-shirt. Uh, <laughs> and you know, I think I um. I think I'm going to have to send you one as well. When we're done, I'll get your address. Oh, right, I'll yeah. send you one. But I think we need a number between one and seven. One and, and seven. Hmm. One and seven. Well, given that it's my favorite Star Wars movie, we'll go with five. Number five. <laughs> okay, Nick. Who's number five? Nick is typing away. It's Dale Erdman. Dale. Congratulations, Dale. Ooh, ooh, Dale, way to go. Yes. You you will get a shirt. I will contact you uh, after the show. And uh, listen, guys, it, uh, it was so great to see all of you hanging out with us uh, in the chat. If you want to become a patron for as little as three bucks a month, you can join these every Tuesday with whoever our guest is. Cool guests like Kevin Cabral and all the others that we have coming down the pike kevin this was so much fun thank you so much for hanging out with us this was great man i i thank you for having me on the show and it's always so fun to share my star wars story with you so appreciate it awesome kevin we will talk to you again soon